class is officially done for the day <sighs> on a completely unrelated topic I gotta call my landlord our garbage disposal is not freaking working I keep having to like unclog it it sucks but let's uh let's talk about something that's actually on topic so arms it's really be the same stuff I normally do you know uh, and it doesn't really like the repetitiveness of these workouts does not bother me you know like even though I could do I mean honestly how many days in a row has it been like back no no legs chest back arms you know I changed it up a little for like two weeks didn't really like it went back to what I know I like with this little four-day split you know I mean I can understand wanting to change up your routine every couple of months but you know apart from novelty I don't think you're really getting anything else extra from like just constantly switching up your split or your workout style or your muscle pairings you know as long as you hit everything twice ish a week you know for me I hit everything every four days and then I just repeat the process so I do twice a twice every eight days which I mean eight days seven days it's pretty close and you get a pretty solid pump each workout for each muscle you know you maybe do eight ish ten ish working sets not including your warm-ups of course you finish your lift with a pump you know any little deviations from that basic outline they might help a little they're definitely not gonna hurt too much you know but you know, I make this point every time I talk about different training styles or whatever you know some dudes train in completely different ways and then you know you <laughs> you could have two dudes with pretty comparable physiques and one guy only does like full body cross workout CrossFit style workouts, and then the other guy does more, you know, bodybuilding training. Right? If they both got the same result at the end, what's the common denominator? Right? They're both training and they're probably pushing themselves reasonably hard on a consistent basis. So the more often you can do that, the better off you will freaking be. So arms is going to be tries first. Um, you know, I've. I've done the back and forth style, like the superset style workout, where you do a set of triceps and then a set of buys with maybe, well, usually I don't really do any rest in between. Usually just the walk from maybe the tricep push down to the dumbbells to do some dumbbell curls. That's a little bit of a moment to catch your breath. And sure, you know, you can get a pretty good pump, but I don't know. And, you know, I've done that style for a long time. I did that for months on end. But now I kind of feel like I just want to target one specific muscle at a time, just thrash it, and then once it's done, move on to the next one. That's, uh, that's sort of the ideological style of my workout training. But, you know, it's whatever. If you like doing two sets of pushdowns and then two sets of curls and going back and forth like that, as long as at the end of the workout, you know, you did... Uh, enough volume for each muscle and you're probably good you know don't overcomplicate it too much so I'm thinking push downs perhaps with a rope straight bar they have some dip machines but they're not good like the they're dip machines where the handles kind of move individually it's just really finicky so I don't love it I do like dip machines though but I want it to be pretty solid right like the ones where you can move each arm like this, I don't, too overcomplicated. But push downs with a rope, straight bar, single arm, underhand, maybe some skull crushers, maybe. I'll have to see how I feel. And then triceps will be fully pumped. And then biceps, I've got even more variety at my disposal. Dumbbell curls, dumbbell curls where I kind of pause it halfway up and then finish the curl. Easy bar, preachers, machine curls concentration curls you know at the end of the day as long as you do you know your amount of volume of work for your biceps I don't really care what kind of curls you do I'm not prone to do too many reverse curls just because you're working a lot of forearm and for the most part I think if your forearms are slacking you should probably just train them directly you know I don't want to try to double up on buys and forearms 
I'd rather just hit all buys and then do forearms on their own at the end. But as long as you're filling your bicep and you do a pretty solid variety, like not just the same curl over and over, maybe at least three in a lift, you're probably good. So let's just get in there. Ooh. All right, so I'm gonna switch up my tricep training today. Usually I like starting off with like a movement, like a, just a straight bar push down where I try to load up as much weight as possible. Like I'll put like two plates on the stack, but, and then, so usually I would do that and then finish with like lighter squeezing movements, but still I'll do it backwards. So I know that's typically not what I recommend. Like when I talk about a chest workout, I don't want to start with pec flies. I want to start with bench, but with kind of smaller muscles, like, you know, triceps, thighs, it gets a little bit different in my, you know, mm, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So a couple sets here, light squeeze, really burn out. Perfect start to a tricep pump. So with these, my left tricep is a little bit ahead of the right one in terms of size. So I'll start with the right arm first, right? Hit failure at, you know, 20. And sure, if I could have got maybe 22 in the left one, I'm still gonna cut it. Let's, uh, I think let's go try some skull crushers. Now I know I was just talking smack on this machine in the car, but it's still better than nothing, you know? I kind of, I don't wanna do just push downs for the whole workout. You know, even though I could do the rope or the bar or single arm like I was just doing, I still like the dipping action. And with these, I'm gonna make sure, same thing with the single arms that I was just doing. It is a bit heavier, but when I'm fully extended, I'm really trying to fucking flex as if I'm trying to bend my arm fucking backwards and hyperextend it. So one, one of these, maybe two, maybe three if it feels good, you know, you never know. Oh yeah. All right, one more, a little lighter. The, the full stack might be a little too much. enough of that yeah I don't know if you saw that little wobble when I started that's why I don't like when these two things move individually same logic as all the sets I've been doing so far light squeezing 
And when I do these, I'm trying to pull the handle apart at the bottom. That's sort of my mental cue to squeeze. Okay. Let's do something else. I, I like that, but I don't like it that much. A little bit selfish because I'm, you know, I'm holding a bench and a preacher curl, but this is the best setup for skull crushers because you've got the rack right there in the starting position. I always hate doing it where I have to like pick it up and throw it on my legs and then throw it up to my chest. This is way better. So I might actually, I think I'm only going to do one set of these, but I'm still going to get some tricep stimulation. You know, I don't mind doing just one set of a movement and then moving on to something else. For one thing, let's say I do a movement and I don't love it. I don't want to keep doing it. I want to do something I know I will like, but also it's still just volume adding to the total volume of the lift. I don't have to do five sets of a movement for it to have an effect. I can just do one good one and then move on to something else. But still, it's going to add up to eight if you catch what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Oh. Yeah, that's enough of that. Uh, a little more than half the stack. I'm just gonna fucking squeeze out, man. This whole tricep workout has just been relatively controlled squeezing sets. You know, very out of character for me. Biceps are freaking fully pumped. Let's um, let's not fucking make haste or make waste. Whatever. Let's get biceps started and with some kind of curl, obviously. All right. So after a reasonably extensive bicep warm up of curling the 35s for a couple, and then the 55s for a couple, then the 65s for a couple, and the 75s for two, I think I'm ready for a solid set with the 75s. The only thing I have to do now is find a good song to play while I hit it. So something about the dumbbell curls was kind of hitting me right in this area. I need to get like a little thing, like a lacrosse ball, to kind of like work it out. But I did a feeler rep. So dumbbell preachers will feel, I was about to say perfect, they'll just feel good. So let's, uh, let's just throw around the 60 for a couple. Ugh. Ugh. 
Two more. I'm not really concerned with ripping my bicep off because I don't completely extend my arm, right? I think it's, I mean, I'll just say this. You're not gonna catch me doing creature curls and completely straightening out my arm like that at the bottom. Whoa, don't even like thinking about it. I didn't really realize it, but I'm kind of a straight bar curl advocate. Advocate? Activist, there we go. You know, I keep seeing posts talking about how straight bar curls just wrench the fuck out of your wrists. And honestly, I had the same thought process for a while, but I've kind of changed up my technique. So now I put my arms like way in front of me so that my hands are like parallel with each other, if you can imagine. It's like I'm almost using my lats as, a, uh, as an arm blaster. And when I do it like that, it doesn't give me any forearm pain. So let's just throw the sack around for maybe one or two. You know, see if it feels good or not. I like that a lot. I feel like as I'm doing the curl too, when I come up towards the top, I'm almost trying to pull my elbows towards each other in front of my, let's say just midsection. enough of that let's do I don't know what we'll do something all right so last two sets I think we'll just go back to where we began with the dumbbell curls now these are only the 40s so I'm not just gonna do a straight set I'll make it just a touch extra complicated so I'll go halfway up on one hold it for like just a moment and then finish the curl so see, there's nothing really special about that style it's not like I'm stimulating a specific kind of fiber by doing it like that but pausing the rep halfway up means i can't just go all the way to the top using momentum you know that means that once i get to here and i stop the weight i have to seriously contract my bicep to move the fucking dumbbell up to the top position it's not groundbreakingly complicated 
But if you can't really feel your bicep firing when you do curls, I think doing these will definitely help you feel a little bit of something. more of those and then we're gonna check the pump. Okay. All right, let's go check this freaking pump. Arms are now fully pumped. Got the exposure down to a freaky level. Let's see how they're looking. Yeah, definitely didn't push the envelope with the weight today. It's not like I think you need to go like your 100% max weight for eight reps on you know your working sets. I'm not gonna say that's not gonna. Oh. I'll say that'll, that's probably going to be a good set, but you don't have to do it every set, you know? I mean, like you just saw, I did a reasonably moderate workout in terms of the weight, but I still push myself on all the sets, right? Again, coming back to the key, I guess these aren't the ancestral tenants, but close enough. As long as you go hard and you end your lift with a solid pump, I think you did something right. So, let's see how we're looking. Oh, yeah. we got something going on for sure. <clears throat> Dude, even just sitting here doing this fucking crucifix, I feel like my biceps are like fucking stretched like rubber bands. Yeesh. No. I guess all there's all that there is left is front lat spread and then we can get in the car and get out of here. Dude, I love a front lat spread with a fucking arm puck. Yeah, they just look so fucking thick. Very good. So again, another key I guess not again, but another key uh let's just say indicator that you had a good pump or that you're getting reasonably big is when you're fully pumped if you can't touch your fucking shoulder with your finger All right, no contact oh definitely no contact perfect so i'm gonna loiter for a bit and then i've got two pounds of top round steak in the sous vide that i'm gonna sear on the cast iron skillet probably eat a pound now and then a pound when i get a well I guess just a pound later, but let's go get in the car. All right, time has passed, but this is still in technicality, the post-workout car talk. Just slightly longer post. I went home, showered, I, oh, dude. I've got a whole little tray of uh, freaking beef. I'm kind of freaking excited about it. Let me see if I can show off a little bit of it. Oh, you can imagine. Well seasoned, cut up, and then I put in just a little bit of uh, low carb barbecue sauce. Not a ton, because I wouldn't want to ruin the steak with a ton of barbecue sauce, but just a little. I tell you what, there's no better cooking method than the sous vide. I mean, if I were to put this straight into the cast iron, I'd have freaking gray bands thicker than my triceps after that tricep pump like this is perfectly pink 
very nice. So post-workout, it's not like I'm jumping to take in a ton of protein. Really, I just need protein throughout the day. Uh, usually, I would want to do some more carbs post-workout, especially in a bulking context. But, you know, dieting, I'm not particularly concerned with, um, you know, replenishing my glycogen just because I'm already going to be flat in a dieting context anyway. You know, it's not, it's not so crucial. If anything, in a cut, the most important macro is going to be your protein. You know, bulking up, you know, you can get away with eating less than a gram per pound of gram per pound of body weight of protein. What's really going to decide whether or not the scale moves up and down. I mean, calories are calories. So if you eat in a surplus, you're going to gain weight. But I think carbs are the ticket just to being full, strong, and then recovered. So, hmm. getting back on topic to the actual arm day. Yeah, it didn't go too freaking heavy, you know? I mean, all pretty moderate weight, especially those first single arm pushdowns for triceps. I mean, that was like nothing, you know? Well, not nothing. It was like half the stack. But slow, controlled, and get a real good burn. You know, nothing else I could really go for. Ah. And this is some uh, zero sugar lemonade. Again, you know, any sort of variable in terms of your diet, which you can manipulate for like the low carb diet save option, it's probably going to be freaking good for you. I. There's caveats though. When it comes to that keto, those keto buns, like the Live Carb Smart buns, I think I got to chill out on them. Uh, I was talking to somebody and he said that he didn't like them because they kind of made them bloated and like gassy. And I was like, they've never done that for me. But then I remembered I haven't really been doing the Carb Smart buns as much as I have. Dude, it's been hitting me hard. Just kind of a little side effect of the freaking. I mean, I guess that's the price you pay. I'm going from a 20 grams worth of carb sandwich to a three. You know, it gets you in an unexpected way. The live, uh, no, the uh, the low carb tortillas, though, those do not mess with me. So those are definitely going to maintain their place in the diet. So only another three weeks. I'm already getting pretty antsy for the bulk. Somebody was talking to me about Cinnamon Toast Crunch in the gym today. And I was like, yeah, I miss it. I miss it a little. You know, I could have some, you know, and just have it fit the macros. But it kind of goes against the point of dieting, you know. It's like, I know I'm going to have as much as I want later on. So I may as well just stay away from it for now. So. What else is there to discuss? Not much, man. I guess to chill out for the next couple of days school-wise because it's uh, it's technically fall break, but they kind of boned me because, I mean, all, all the fall break is, is no class on Friday, and I already don't have class on Friday, so they really, really hit me with that one, but midterms are basically over, get a little bit of a, get to take the pedal off the gas just a little, but, you know, even when I got hours upon hours of studying in a day, Usually you never have to do that if you study like a responsible student and you spread it out throughout the week. But I guess that's just not me. But even if I've got a shit ton of stuff to do, you know, skipping the lift, that is a last resort. That's no chance. Come on. Got to make room for that kind of shit. Honestly, I almost feel like I'm making room for the rest of my life instead of the gym, right? Like me going to the gym, it's just a guarantee at this point. And honestly, that is a pretty solid situation to be in, in terms of making long-term progress, just because now it's not even a question. Like for me, it's not even a freaking question whether or not I'm going to go left, right? It's, uh, <laughs> it's just a guarantee. So the more comfortable you can get with that sort of routine. And uh, I mean, I don't, I don't even want to say I'm disciplined. Because I don't have to think about doing it, you know? It's just, like, you got to raise the bar of your new normal, right? As you lift for long enough, you know, in terms of your, your like, intensity, right? You should kind of have a little bit of a, 
I'm trying to imagine how the graph would look, right? It should spike and then it should maintain a new normal. And then it should spike again. Like if you have a seriously good chest day and you're really hyped up about it, perfect lift, you went super hard. That should just become your new normal level of intensity, right? And then that'll be your baseline for a little while. You should kind of realize, oh crap, maybe I haven't been pushing myself that hard because that level of intensity is now your new normal, right? Every couple of months, I sort of look at myself and I'm like, or if I had a leg day or something where I didn't really push it and I'm like, what the fuck was that? All right, come on. And then the next day, come back even harder. That is the way to do it. I think a lot of people kind of get stuck in just a, I mean, I've talked about this before, kind of just a level of intensity, which is only going to be able to do maintenance for them. You know, you can go into the gym every day, hit a lift, get a normal-ish pump, then go home and you know, eat whatever. And you can just look the same, right? Even though you're doing everything, well, I guess not perfectly right, but even though you're doing seemingly the same stuff as the next guy who's progressing, right? You still show up, you do your lift and you leave. You know, if you're not kind of constantly adding new stress to your physique, you know, stress to the body, then I mean, the old freaking Arnold adage of trying to shock the muscle, that's legit. And it's not just the types of movements that you do either, right? It's your intensity. If you just maintain the same level of intensity, every lift, and you're not really pushing yourself, then it's no question that you're going to hit a plateau at some point for sure. I think that's all I got to say about that. So the cardio in a cutting context, I mean, everyone gets the gist. Cardio is good for you. You're going to burn more calories. You'll be able to burn more fat. But I really just can't sympathize with you guys when you're like, why would I do cardio on a bulk? Well, I'm, I'm trying to bulk. I'm good. Why would I want to burn 300 calories? You're just going to fucking improve your metabolism. And just because you burn 300 calories doesn't mean, oh crap, now I got to eat 300 more calories to counteract it. How much, how many calories of food do you think 300 calories is, man? A McDonald's single cheeseburger is 300 calories. And if you put one of those in front of me on a table and then you blink, it's going to be gone by the time you open your eyes again. You know, 300 calories is not a lot. And more likely than not, you're going to end up wanting to eat more than that just to kind of replenish the energy that you burnt off. So cardio is, I mean, it's a year-round thing, man. C cutting, bulking, whatever. Dude, that's just, I, just, I don't even want to say but that's my opinion. That's just what I've observed to be the, the best-case scenario, you know? If you really want to kind of improve your training or maybe you've been slacking on your cardio and you're like, oh, crap, I just, come on, at least try it, you know, it's just, and honestly, it's not even that hard, but maybe I'm just saying that because I've done it for so long that it's just become normal for me. You know, I can't really, eesh, dude, in terms of the lifting, I can't really remember a time when I didn't do the cardio and it doesn't have to be insane fucking intensity on the Stairmaster either, you know, like I don't mind even just walking on the treadmill. I don't love walking on the treadmill because for me to burn what the machine says is 300 calories, it takes a little bit longer. So for me, my favorite method is just the, uh, the recumbent bike. I couldn't remember the name of that. I, a lot of you guys were commenting it. Thank you. But, um, you know, just sit down, you pedal for 30 minutes. Sure. You're, you're exerting effort. Like it's not zero effort. It does take a little bit of force to actually get through it. But dude, I'm, I'm more concerned with just playing around on my phone or like watching shows or just like whatever else, you know, if you want to just do your cardio, like a monk, like a stoic and just sit there and have nothing but your own thoughts. Sure. I guess I could see how that wouldn't be an awesome situation, but you've got your phone with you, man. Right. You know? So three more weeks of cutting, then we finally start eating as much food as I want. Uh, one thing, I'll, this will be my last little point. When it comes to the bulking and dieting loop, well, I say dieting, I guess I mean cutting, right? The bulking and cutting little cycle, right? You're going to look the craziest, or well, I guess I'll just talk about me. I'm going to look the craziest on the beginning of the bulk. Because then I'll be as lean as I am in this whole little back and forth, but I'll also be fully carved up. 
because I mean, you know, when I eat, let's say I just ended the bulk or ended the cut right now, and I just went to went to Sheets and got like three bags of Skittles, some chocolate milk, a bunch of uh, you know, I love the Gushers, man. I've got a the Gushers hits me a certain way. I tell you what, but you know, let's say I have five hundred grams of carbs right before I go to bed. <laughs> Freaking I pretty large quantity of those is just going to send be sent directly into my muscles just because I'm so carb depleted from being at a deficit. So, you know, imagine just being the same leanness, but you know, every muscle is just going to be much more full. So at the end of the bulk, when you start dieting, that's when you'll look kind of quote unquote, the worst, just because that's when you'll be as soft as ever in this little loop because you just finished a whole bulk and you're going to be flat because you, uh, you know, you don't have as many carbs in your system pumping up your muscles. So the enlightened lifter, you know, I make this kind of reference all the time. The enlightened lifter is not going to be concerned with the fact that he's a little bit softer on a bulk. And he's definitely not going to be concerned that he's a little bit weaker on the cut just because both of those states are conducive with long-term progress. No. I don't really have a ton of stuff to say about main gaining. It'll work, man. You know, as a, especially as a beginner, that's definitely the way to do it. Just make sure you hit a gram per pound of protein per, uh, a gram per pound of body weight of protein per day, right? Just start drinking some protein shakes, whatever. And then, you know, hit the gym on a consistent basis. That'll freaking change how you look. But newbie gains only last so long. And then you know, now I'm into the whole bulky and cutting loop. So regardless of what, if you're bulking, cutting, maintaining, or if you're just like a non-lifter and you're trying to get into it, I wonder what percentage of you guys that category falls under. Uh, you know, hopefully you had a good lift today. I'm really being hopeful by saying, I hope you did your cardio today. Yeah, that's freaking all I got to say. Tomorrow's going to be legs. I'll see how my adductor feels because I want to squat. I don't know. Maybe I need to do some adductor PT. Actually, not even maybe. I definitely need to. I need to add a... Because I think that the adductor machine, like it's definitely hitting me in the adductor, kind of toughening it up. But I need a different sort of stimulus. Maybe something with like cables and kind of doing like a swinging motion. I don't know. I'll figure something out. Because I don't love doing a ton of squats in terms of volume. Like I'm not, you're not going to see me doing like eight sets of squats back to back, but I love a heavy set of squats. I freaking love it. So that's all I got to say, man. I'll see you next time.